and welcome back to the crochet crowd and i just gotta flip you because if i don't flip you some of you are gonna get all flippy <laughs> so let me just take a look here and how do i flip this thing i don't recall if i do this i think it flips it backwards yes it does oh i know first world problem Okay, so we're going to just pretend that I'm right-handed in this video today. I'm just hooking out. I am working through a process of doing stuff, of course. And here at the home studio, and I'm loom knitting today. And I bought a loom at the Big W, so Walmart. And so anyway, I'm giving it a test try with some brand new yarn. I know it's going to be backwards on screen for you, but it's called the Bernat Forever Fleece. I don't know how to flip this damn camera. I've done it before though, because some of you were flipping out. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But anyway, it's called Bernat Forever Fleece. It's brand new. And anyway, I've been kind of working with this yarn today to see how it's gonna work itself out. So I'm gonna illuminate with you today. And, uh, oh, it's not backwards. Am I, it's not backwards? Okay, that's fine. Well, amen. I'm not even religious, but amen. Okay, so um, Facebook, I'm always appearing backwards, but you know. So anyway, I'm just sitting here looming, and so I have 25 rounds to do my loom knitting, and loom knitting goes really quick. So because it's ultra thick yarn, too. If you like it thick, I like it thick. Um, welcome to my messy studio. So if you want me to give tips on how to clean a house, you're on the wrong channel today. So. So yeah, so I'm just kind of knitting. So I'm not knitting with the two sticks. So I'm knitting with the loom knitting. And then anyway, I kind of got back. Somebody asked me about uh, crocheting with one hand and loom knitting is a great example of something that can be done with one hand easier than crochet. So anyway, so I was at Walmart and I've been noticing this loom. I don't go to Walmart very often, but I noticed this loom and I thought, you know, I'm just gonna buy it because it is interchangeable and Anyway, the instructions were quite difficult, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm a simple-minded guy, but um, what was happening is that it gave instructions on how to make a hat, but it doesn't tell you what size hat. And I know from looming experience that the size hat that is recommended in the package is gonna be for a newborn, and I really wanted the hat for myself. I'm not gonna sit here. I can do a charity box if I want to. Um, so, um, but I really wanted the hat for myself, so. I know, it's selfish. Um, but anyway, I really wanted to give this yarn a bit of a spin, so I have an opinion. So anyway, so I thought this was a cleaning. How, oh, please, Christine. And nothing's clean, including anything that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I'm having a good Tuesday so far. So don't wreck it. Um, just tell me how to get through life. Yeah, well, when you know, then you can let me know because I am just constantly struggling, I think. I think I'm like everybody else, though. Nothing is ever simplified, right? Um, so I uh, hope and that everybody is doing good here. The dogs are actually sleeping right behind me outside. So if you just look outside, the dogs are there. So you see, one's in the door and then the other one's in the, in the grass. So anyway, so they're here. They're keeping me copying. They're in the shade, so they're great peonies, so they do not like the direct sun in any way. So I haven't loom knitted, I think, in a year or so, probably longer. I thought, ah, you know, something different. So somebody's working the Woodland Afghan. That's my design, I think. Um, are you dabbling with miniatures? I haven't started yet. I want to start a, I want to join a workshop locally the store just reopened it's been closed all summer um the person took a break and closed her store for the summer but she's reopened and i want to take some workshops with her and it'll get me out of the house too so yeah so it's apparently 100 degrees where they live i'm wearing a sweater <laughs> here in nova scotia it's been actually a cooler summer it started off really ugly hot in um july with the air conditioning just got cranked and then the power bill was scary as hell but uh august has been much cooler it's almost it feels like september for the month of august and uh it's 
kind of how we are. So Kelly finally cleaned and organized her yarn room. So you can come and do me later. My office is a wreck. A wreck. So yeah. Um, did the hook, uh, hook come with the hook? No, it doesn't. This hook is a cricket, um, a cricket hook. And so it's thicker. Um, because I've been crocheting a long time, I think my hand dexterity is a little off. So using smaller tools just doesn't work for me. I know, I know somebody's gonna make a comment, you like bigger tools. You can preach it all you want, it's true. Um, I need my tools to be a bit thicker. Um, yeah, in a naughty kind of way. Um, it's like crochet, my hooks are longer than typical. Um, again, I like a big solid thing to hang on to. Um, it makes me crochet better. And I think it's just because my hands are just tired of crochet for like 30 some odd years. I don't know, I'm 50, how long have I been crocheting? Is it 30? I'm 50 and I started when I was 14, so that makes me an old crocheter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, old as dirt. So the Addy Loom, watched your Addy Loom, oh yeah, that's been a long time. That, that thing has been interesting. I see people using the, kind of like an Addy Loom thing on TikTok with people using drills and stuff to make it spin. God forbid I spit out once and it tangles and snags and shit and then I just like <sighs> So anyway, the, the best thing of this whole thing is wrapping it. So I use just an empty pen and I wrap because my fingers just do not have the dexterity to be able to play with this. So I just paint the yarn onto the the little peggy waggies and it just goes on naturally it's the only thing natural about this house is the yarn so it just is going on to the yarn in its own fashion and therefore i don't end up with tight or loose sections i know sometimes tighter is not always better my friends and i know you heard it here first i won't say that very often though <laughs> yeah so anyway that's kind of my long story today so I think Wendy's joining us today. Uh, Mr. Ribs. Mr. Ribs, I don't know what that means. So anyway, um, Wendy and I are vigilantly behind the scenes. We have this spammer that seems to have got a hold of our YouTube channel. And anyway, um, you're never gonna notice it because the person is just saying weird stuff. And I'm not gonna give any clues to it, but anyway, um, She's basically says something so generic that it doesn't make sense for the channel. And it's so um, generic that it doesn't really call your attention. But because I read the comments, I'm like, okay, it says your content is so good. Okay, you know, nobody ever uses the word content unless they're using the word content. And I'm like, God, that sounds weird. So anyway, you click the, the profile name and certainly enough, it's... Uh, somebody showing all her bits and pieces anyway so we have been uh, we've been spammed i think quite a few times but she only responds one time but if anybody's dumb enough to click her profile and when i say dumb enough i mean like people don't usually click people's profiles i don't think on youtube um but anyway we've been busy getting rid of taking up the trash yeah so Sherry says, great content, Mikey. Sherry, don't be messing with me because I will report you. <laughs> You're lucky I know who you are. Mm -hmm. Sherry's got the same last name of somebody that I grew up with. Um, she was kind of mean to me in school, but then she ended up connecting with me in my adult years and I just kind of like let it kind of just ride away into the sunset. She was nicer as an adult, for sure. But I don't know if it's just me, but you know, those kids that just are kind of mean to you in school, you wish that they would have a rough life. And uh, anyway, and get some really good karma. So, uh, yep. I don't know, it makes me kind of sick happy. So I was quite, uh, in high school, I was quite uh, the victim of a lot of bullying that happened and uh, and so anyway, so anybody that I happened to run into from my past and I realized they've had a bad life and it was them that were causing it because there was a group of people, like several, um, it just makes me so happy. 
Yeah. So Rebecca says the best revenge is a life well lived. I already got a complicated life. Um, so anyway, so. Yeah. Hey, Google, stop. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. I don't know. So I can never, like, what's on my hook? Um, what's on my hook today is a loom. And I'm just playing here and I'm just flipping my stitches. Um, somebody's working the kaleidoscope throw. That's a good one. I know exactly when you're working on. I have no life to remember these kind of things. Uh, what do you, uh, what yarn do you use for your puppies since there is no more Bernat blanket pets? I don't use any yarn for the, we have two great Pyrenees dogs. They sleep out in the snow by choice. They don't have to, but they do. And they sleep out in the rain. Um, these dogs are so well insulated that if I make them anything, um, and the only difference with the Bernat blanket that was, that it was treated with, um, some kind of chemical that would reduce the odor of the pets. So it's really kind of for that blanket, but it was just treated with something. I forget, but it was some kind of antibacterial thing that would absorb the smell. But it's something you could probably buy at the pet store. But they haven't made that yarn in a long time. So I have been working on search engine stuff in the evening. So um, just last night I was kind of binge watching um, White Lotus for the third time on um, that series. And anyway, it's kind of a disaster show that's awesome. And anyway, so I've been working in the SEO in the evenings, trying to recategorize and update my systems and stuff. So just been sitting there just minding my own business. Mm, I know it's hard to believe minding my own business. Um, and I think I can speak for Wendy too. Like I'm 50 years old, so I'm finding myself, I don't give a crap about the small stuff in life anymore. I used to, and... Uh, um, Maybe it's medication talking or something, but um, I had stopped worrying about stuff that you really have no control over, like uh, world issues I do worry about, but um, some some of the small stuff. Um, if the dog, you know, happens to do something on the floor, big deal, just clean it up. But I've stopped worrying about stuff that you really can't use up any energy for. So anyway, so Wendy said it flipped a switch in her brain it really did for me just the stuff i used to worry about i don't worry about so much and then there's stuff that i'm worrying about today that um i can't help but worry about but there's nothing really i can do about it so it's like yeah anybody else like that some people hit that and get that a lot earlier in life but um i care about what people go through and i care about people um in the sense of their lifestyle uh choices and how they live and you know, being able to afford to live and and I care about all that stuff. There's not much I can do about it, but I do care. So I don't think I'll ever lose that and I hope I don't because that's when you lose empathy, right? Uh, one of my back stories that I have and Wendy's like rolling her eyes, I can just feel it from here. And uh, just click here. And uh, is that I used to be a transport driver before this and my butt has been all over North America in uh, Canada and the US and so one of the things that when I started this is that people would say they're from somewhere and I'm like you know what I've been through there in the truck I have an idea where they live in their environment and stuff so I found that when I started the crochet crowd I was really quite fascinated with where people were crocheting and and their lifestyles and in the environment and a lot of things um, so when I started truck driving, everything was like an adventure, right? But then as the years go on, you realize that the lands and, and the sightseeing stuff ends up becoming a time marker. You've seen it a million times. And so, you know, by the time you see that, it's so many hours that passes. So where I lived in Ontario, uh, for example, it was only 27 hours to drive uh, from Dallas, Texas to home. And so my partner and I, we team drove, so the truck was always moving and separate. We fuel, fuel up once. And uh, we would be home literally the next day, uh, all the way from Texas to Ontario, Canada. And so things become more of a time marker than they become a fascination. 
and that's what you need to get out of a job because then it's like oh my god and i would look at the planes in the sky and i would like say god <laughs> why am i not blind but i'm driving somebody's groceries or or whatever it is i haul toilets i haul trees hauled a lot of stuff um we hauled one of the things that we did haul uh, we hauled actually a whole truckload of of uh calling our of calling cards and anyway the truck was sealed and the truck was not allowed to stop and we had to report in like every few hours um to somewhere saying that we're still on the road and that we're still safe just in case anybody knew that was in our truck so we would not get uh any issues anyway that was it's all the world of, of trucking really So I'm just going to spin again. I feel like Will of Fortune. we just got to keep spinning. Sit on my lazy behind and just spin away. Yep, so I'm just sitting here on a Tuesday. Contemplating life. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do we got? Former dispatcher, married to a driver, daughter, granddaughter of a driver, says Rebecca. Trucking is the hardest job there ever is. I don't care what anybody says to me. Teacher, I think, is up there with it, though. Um, but it is a terrible job. Terrible. Um, you get paid well, at least I did. But you're never home to spend your money. And so you live permanently in a truck, which is fine. Um and you basically so here's the thing so wendy's heard this story before she's she's gonna roll her eyes but anyway so when you cross the border you're not allowed certain things because the u.s has its rules and what's allowed to cross so they would put the damn dogs in my truck and i'm not a smoker i'm not a drug user um so but you know my hair was always fabulous and i looked good and so anyway would they would put the trucks in my car or my tr- or they would put the dogs in my in my truck at the US border going in. And so the dog would sniff my food. And so I would have like Chef Boyardee, I would have all my food, um, Campbell's soups, cause I had a little oven in, the, in there and I had uh, a fridge and a whole nine yards. So what I didn't know is that I'm not allowed to bring stuff like that across the border. So anyway, the border ends up taking out my food. And I'm like, well, what am I going to eat for like a week? So I literally had to drive across the damn border as they took out all my stuff out of my truck just to go to a Walmart, just to re-grocery shop so I could eat again. So, and we had a rule because my partner and I drove is that we only ate out once a week when we were driving truck. So I was actually much skinnier driving truck than I am now. Go figure. I know. It's when the stress is of working from home. So anyway, so that's kind of... One thing. So I did consider before I started this whole mess on the crochet crowd, but I considered actually becoming a, a, a coach bus driver for long haul. Um, I was considering, but then they wanted me to drive a school bus as a, as a training. And I'm like, I am not driving kids. No. Nope. So anyway, they said, well, then you're not going to be driving a coach bus. And I said, okay, I'm moving on. But I thought the coach bus might be more interesting than stopping and going with kids that really don't care much about me. So I'm making a, a loom knit hat. That's what I'm doing today. So I'm just hanging out with you today. So what are you stitching today at home? Um, I am just working my way through here. Dogs are sleeping. They're they're like a night breed, so they're up in the evenings. They wake up around five o'clock, ready for some supper. Oh, driving kids is hard. My daughter is doing that while she's finishing college. I can't imagine. I mean, I took the bus to school as a kid. We were terrible. <laughs> and anyway, Eileen, our bus driver, she was always yelling at the mirror, yelling. And then sometimes we'd get to the school and then the vice principal, Mrs. Yonke, would have a bird. 
And so if, if she got a hold of you, though, like, you want to cry. You want to start the cry before she starts yelling because you know it's coming. <laughs> um, anyway, so she wasn't going to put up with nothing. So anyway, my sister ended up having her as a, as a teacher. Yeah, she made my sister cry, too. She makes everybody cry. So let me just spin again. So... Do, 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 do. I know you want to touch it, don't you? Like my loom. Actually, it took me a bit getting used to this um, configuration of a loom, but I think I'm over the drama. So Sherry loves the Muppets. Yeah, I'm kind of a... Uh, so TV show, Wendy's like, oh my God, we're talking TV again. So uh, TV show, I'm showing my Canadian roots, but one of my favorites as a kid was Today's Special. Any Canadians here that remember that show? Jeff Hislop was in there and he was a mannequin. Um, so, okay, so um, I'm crocheting on the Georgia Bulldog Afghan. Don't know what that is. So it looks like everybody's got something going. So there's a whack of new yarn that's come out this summer. And I think more coming out in the fall. Um, they actually revived an old yarn. I, I'm allowed to talk about it now, but they revived uh, Bernat Maker. I love that yarn. It just never got the... And it was actually a popular yarn. And then it kind of got shelved for a few years and now it's back this year. And I have a ton of videos on the yarn. So that's the nice thing about filming stuff is that, and leaving it online because you never know if something will come back. So anyway, Bernat Maker is on its way back out. Um, I don't know which store is carrying it, um, but I'm really glad that it's back out. It's the, probably the best yarn to teach somebody with. Um, Another yarn that um, has come out, this that's absolutely brand new, is Bernat Plush. Um, I love this yarn. Um, surprisingly, really, really enjoying that yarn. Um, it's got a really heavy thickness to it. Um, and I sense that people, maybe with autism, um, with people that like a good weighted blanket, because I think weighted, it's weighted it, blankets help autism. It's, I think it's one of those, I think, I think it's autism. Anyway, so it does a really nice, good weighted blanket um, on there as well. So I think that's kind of neat. So somebody's working on the Young Sheldon blanket. So Heather says, yes, they do. So I think she's talking about the weighted blanket. So anyway, Daniel was just here just before I went live. And so he's there. Apparently there's a tropical something going on in the Caribbean that is expected to meet up here. And he wants me to help him with the pond. And uh, that's kind of a... Uh, so anyway, so that he wants to get the pond liner in. So we're expecting 50 to 100 millimeters of rain which is a lot. Um, so anyway, he wants to get the liner in before it does that major dumping. So I don't know. I don't know. Yep. So that's, so somebody's working on a corner to corner today. So anyway, um, I've had the studio door open probably most of the summer now which is kind of unusual. It's been, the weather's been here, it's been pretty decent. So anyway, so a lot of the videos that got filmed over the summer have the ambient noise of the kind of the traffic and the general sounds of Nova Scotia behind. So Kelly says, Kelly uh, is my friend locally here. Um, she's my stitching be um, buddy beside me at Stitch Night and I feed her candy and everything. And Kelly, you like it wet. <laughs> Yeah, so Kelly's one of my favorite people. 
Don't tell her, though. It might go to her head. So I'm just going to sit here and spin again. Now, if they could make crochet like a casino, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. People would truly be hooked. Actually, how could you make crochet like a casino? How are you guarantee a good business model there? Got to stitch a row and then get a free spin of something. I don't know. I'm sure if there was uh, anybody that thought of it, I'm sure it would have been done. But um, who here in the audience feels um, that you are truly addicted to yarn? Does anybody actually have that addiction? I know, I, I, I think I have it. So, so Kelly's got the winner, winner chicken dinner today. So I told you she likes it wet. Anyway, Kelly in the videos is the one threatening to cut off my balls. Just so you know, she's dangerous with scissors. So, okay, so Goldie, uh, Golden might be me are addicted. So somebody gave up smoking and so they want all the yarn they can handle. I'm at the point where I'm starting to give away more yarn than I'm collecting. I think you might need to take my temperature and not in my mouth either. Um, I just feel like I'm just, I've got my favorite yarns that I like sticking with. Um, so I've been giving away quite a bit of yarn to charities that are local to me. Don't message me to ask me to put you on the list. I'm not going to do it. Um, locally, there's a need for the women's shelters and the school programs and um, halfway houses and uh, mental services and stuff to go around to be able to give some yarn away to these people. So so why ship it when you can just deliver it locally, right? So, uh, our Wendy deletes the comments because she's mean. She's a mean girl. You know, and on Wednesdays, um, Wendy and I wear pink. <laughs> but I tell her fetch isn't going to happen because she goes, that's so fetch. And I'm like, Wendy, it's never going to happen. So anyway, so I think Wendy and I are doing a rehearsal dance. We're going to do the Mean Girls um, Jingle Bell Rock for our community that meets us up at Lake Tahoe. She doesn't know, but I got her a costume. So she will turn around and hit her butt and look all sassy and stuff. And we will dance the night away. So, so we're going to rock around the clock. Yeah, Wendy's like, I didn't quite hear you. Why'd she end up canceling on me? We're sharing a room and everything. <laughs> so I've only met Wendy once in my life. Um, she's been working with me for years, which is a lot of fun. But when I met her, okay, when I met her, though, she was like a good little school girl. And I'm like, she was sitting up proper and everything. And then I took her to Jimmy Beans for a behind the scenes meeting. And then I'm like, the real Wendy popped out. <laughs> oh my God. So anyway, we got a preview of some products that were not out in the market yet. And she was so excited. She left the chair all wet. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I did too. But she would, she almost slipped off. She just goes, I need that. So anyway, when the products came out, guess who was ordering online? Yes, she was. Yeah, so anyway, I kind of doing that. Yeah, uh, crocheting and design, crocheting and designing mugs. You know what? I have not yet seen it in person. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, what's her face? How did, um, Tiffany. I had that, pro had that product. Um, Lord knows I can't even keep a clean studio. A, a clean place. Are, are there any Barbie yarn coming out or Barbie Afghans coming out? Not that I know of, but I actually, Barbie, Barbie, Barbie. 
Actually, I think some of the independent dyers have done something with Barbie. I think Koi Goo did something with Barbie. But your inspiration is no, I don't think so. So anyway, so Wendy's Auntie Barbie. She just didn't get the dream. Did, Wendy, did you ever get a dream house? <laughs> Or how about the double wide trailer? Or no, that was the travel trailer. So if you never got that trail, I don't know why this thing is turning off. Um, somebody had the Barbie convertible. So she just liked the smell of Barbie. So I guess you don't like the, I don't my phone seems to be turning off. I don't know why. Um, so she just likes the smell of Barbie. I can't say that I've ever sniffed a Barbie. Mm. She works for me, folks. <laughs> I can't play with Barbie, she stinks. Um, Anyway, I, I never had that problem, but my Barbies, I played Barbies for sure. So that plastic smell is gross. Interesting. Uh, somebody else, uh, Lee Crafter, didn't have any Barbies growing up. Yeah, I kind of got in big trouble with my mom over Barbies. Um, I had a naked Barbie in my bed. It's not what you're thinking either. But my, I had such a, an, uh, an active imagination that my Barbie was actually a spaceship. <laughs> so she would fly and my, mom or, my mother caught me in my bed with my naked Barbie. And I'm like, she's not even a person, she's a spaceship. And that's the truth, honestly, because, yeah. Look at my personality. Of course, it's, I'm not doing anything with the Barbie. Um, but anyway. So she kind of ruined it for me. So that was, the, I think that's the last time I ever touched Barbie. Because she ripped that out of my hands and said that's so inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. So Vicky still has clothes from when she was a kid. Bro. My mom used to uh, sew the clothes for Barbie too. She would use our old clothes and make, I don't know why this um, camera's doing that. I think I might come back in just a few moments. I think my camera is doing something weird here. Let me just flip you over. Don't get excited. Let's see if that holds. I preferred stuffed animals. So I had a stuffed E.T. I had a stuffed Curious George. Uh, I had a lot of stuffed animals as a kid. They did sleep with me too. Yet those guys didn't get kicked out of my bed. Okay, so my phone seems to be turning down. So I'm going to maybe come back in just a moment or I might not. And we'll just call this quits for now.